Okay, so as many of you may know, I buy and sell laptops on eBay, and one thing that happens quite a lot when I'm flipping these laptops is that I buy the laptop and then there's a part that I need, um, so then, you know, I look on eBay and then I try to find a part, for example, a trackpad cable. So this is from a computer that I just sold the other day. Uh, it was my Dell Precision M4800. Uh, now, originally I listed that laptop with a broken trackpad. Um, and the reason why is because I actually knew what was wrong with it and it was this cable. So if you see here, I actually did try fixing it, but uh, what happened was the little golden contacts had like sort of shifted out of place. Um, it happened a little bit even on this side, you may be able to see. Um, so I just cut this down to see if that would fix it, but there wasn't enough electrical contact for the motherboard to get in contact with the trackpad, or with this cable rather, um, for the trackpad to receive data from the motherboard. Anyways, the point of this video is to tell you guys why it is a good idea to keep all computer parts that you have. And another thing is that, you know, I get a lot of questions from my friends actually, like, why do you keep all these computer parts? And the answer is simple because they come in useful sometimes. Um, now, let me shut this for now. Um, I was gonna grab my computer parts box. Um, but basically, many people think if you're going to keep a box of computer parts, then it's eventually just going to become like your entire house full of computer parts. And that's really not the way it is. As long as you're not a technology hoarder like me, then that stuff won't happen. But for the stuff that you obviously will know that will come in handy someday, like, I don't know, these cables or computer palm rests, or just, those are just a couple of, of examples. There are hundreds of computer parts for people to keep uh, and reasons for people to keep those parts uh, if they do things like I do. And even if you don't do things like I do, if you have like a computer that broke down, for for example, um, then you want a bunch of, you want some parts that you can um, test it with so that you can, you know, do the process of elimination for the parts that are acting up in your computer. You know, if the, if the computer does start to act up, you want to be able to find the source of what's making your computer non-functional. So, yes, and you guys will understand in a second here why my friends ask me why I keep all the computer parts that I have. This is one of my boxes um, of computer parts. I have a couple of trays right here full of like heat sinks and uh, RAM modules and just this little PCB right here. Um, yeah, people will ask me why I keep all that stuff. I've also gotten here. A, uh, a computer power supply. Always keep a spare computer power supply if you built your own computer or even if you didn't build your own computer honestly because these things can be one of the main causes and one of the most missed causes of a defective computer. You know by that I mean they're easy to overlook. So what we've got here as I said is uh, it's just a box full of computer parts um, and you'll see here, we actually have, you know, just a bunch of, uh, I don't know, palm rests and broken LCDs even, and there's really no reason to keep broken LCDs unless you're going to do some, like, DIY lights or something. There's really no reason to keep, uh, broken LCDs, but there's reasons to keep, for example, as I said, the, uh, the palm rests. So I believe this is for a Latitude E6420. Uh, let's see. Um, it's also a good idea to keep these bases or motherboards that are like completely um, fully functioning. Now, I am a person who solders pretty frequently uh, to do minor repairs on computers. Um, this motherboard, I bought it a few weeks ago to repair my Latitude E6442 cell. And uh, it came with a damaged chipset. Okay, so here's the broken cable. 
my goal is actually to, uh, you can actually see right there, uh, these golden contacts are certainly coming out of place. Um, actually, this can be really bad because if uh, you have one of these cables, which is which has like the golden contacts where it is with mine, uh, where the golden contacts sort of fall out of place and can end up touching each other, that can be really dangerous for your computer because that can create what's called a short. And shorts in computer motherboards are not good at all. So, yeah, try to avoid them. <laughs> um, yeah, so as I said, my goal is to find a pretty much the same uh, or similar cable that came from this palm rest. So uh, the reason I used this cable, I actually, the full story is that I took the cable for this because um, I needed something to fix my Precision M4800 with, and so I just snatched it from this and swapped it with this cable. Um, so really, this one would go here. But this is the broken cable, so what do we do now? Because this is my build for next week, the computer that I'm planning to sell uh, next week or sometime around that time. <laughs> um, so let's see, I think, I believe if I look hard enough, I will probably have a compatible cable, or rather an identical cable. Um, so here... We've actually got the uh, heat sinks that I was talking about earlier. This is not just heat sinks, you know, we've got this uh, caddy for a hard drive. We've got a couple cables in here. Um, you've got these buttons for a, for a Dell Latitude E6430 or E6420. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, you can see a couple more heat sinks, a couple cables here. So these are just the cables that didn't really have a placeholder. Um, usually they come with uh, a palm rest like this one or just any other computer component. But basically when that part breaks, um, I either take the functional pieces from it or I just throw the entire broken component in here and then I just pull parts from it later on. Uh, so here it doesn't look like I have any of those cables, uh, any of those flex cables. So we're looking for one of these. This has, what is that, eight contacts. Um, so we need one that looks like this, but longer. So yes, this is the same palm rest that I took that flex cable from, the working one from. Um, let's see, this is also a Dell Latitude palm rest. And I think, wow, we actually, we actually do have one right here. I think, let's, uh, yeah, that is an identical cable. That is, that's pretty awesome. So, let's just uh, take this out, because that's pretty nice to know. I can just take this off carefully. It's actually really nice to know, because um, I was actually looking on eBay for that cable. And when you're looking for these cables, you don't necessarily have to, like, plug in the model number of the computer, because... This is not proprietary to the computer that it came from. This is just a simple, what, eight contact flex cable that you'll find in many notebooks these days. Um, and not even just notebooks, they're in pretty much every electronics. They're just, you might have a different layout or a different amount of uh, golden contacts. Um, yeah, that is pretty awesome. We did find it because uh, on eBay, I was actually not able to find the the connector. Um, of course, when I searched it in the name of the model, but when I searched it as the the cable itself, I was able to find it. But they were they were pretty expensive. I I think one of these was like twenty bucks. So this is just a way you can save yourself a lot of money. And yes, this definitely looks crazy. I know this box of computer parts look, looks crazy. Um, you know, I've got a few. I've actually got a few motherboards right here. You can see I'm not taking great care of them. Um, but two of these are actually fully functional. One I'm actually just using to, you know, pull surface mounted components off of like uh, capacitors and resistors um, for other computers. Well, anyways, guys, I would say that's pretty awesome that we did indeed find the, the, uh, the right cable. So it's 
pretty awesome for me. I don't have to go out and buy one or I don't have to, of course, purchase one from eBay or any other source. So as I said, that's just a way that you can easily save yourself money, uh, you know, of course, in the long run, because you might not need any of these parts immediately. You know, it could be years before you need the parts. I've actually had a few of the, these parts probably for a year or two by now. Uh, most of them I actually bought in a computer lot uh, a couple a couple months ago. Uh, but as you can see, one part has come in handy. So that is pretty awesome. Uh, you know, either way, it's still pretty amazing that I was able to find it. So that's, that's great for me. I don't have to buy a new cable. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it. Thank you guys. Thank you guys very, very much for watching this video. Please be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And uh, don't forget to check out some of my other videos. That is youtube.com slash techbizmo. Anyways, guys, once again, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.